Welcome back, hip hop purists, to another episode of 40 Years of Hip Hop, where we review and dissect a thousand songs over the span of 40 years, from 1979 to 2019. This is your host with the many Elysis, the G Man, aka the G Money, also known as the Incredible G, and the Shinkuro Guy Jin. That's the fan fanatic, the Geek Man. Forever Hip Hop is our new project. It's called Forever Hip Hop Radio. It's on Miss Cloud. And this is where we'll be able to display our song choices, uh, the songs we're reviewing, and everything in between. As we're not just going to be playing the hits, you're going to have different formulas, mixtapes, past mixtapes that were lost in cycle or in history. We're going to have a lot of mix clubs, select premium content for people that want to subscribe. It's going to be a really new cool project, Forever Hip Hop on Mixed Cloud Radio. Today we'll be reviewing on episode 81, Funky Dividends by Three Times Dope. Before, let's take a trip down memory lane. The best songs about greed, more specifically, ladies being greedy, my first memorable song about the subject wasn't a rap song. It was a pop song by one of my favorite artists of all time, Madonna. And it was a material girl. Then you had many rap songs over the years on the specific subject, like Money Cash Holes by Jay-Z featuring DMX, Gold Digger by EPMD. You also had Gold Digger by Kanye West featuring Jamie Foxx. Then you got Got Your Money by ODB, the late old dirty bastard featuring Callis. You had Greedy Bitches by Ghostface Killer featuring Redman and Sean Wiggs. And also a Gold Digger version by Ludacris featuring Bobby V and Little Fate from the animation Shark Tale movie soundtrack. I didn't know about that, a Gold Digger song on an animation kids movie. You gotta check it out. The list can go on, but all these rap tales about greedy women started for me with this week's review by an underrated group named Three Times Dopes with the song Funky Dividends. Before we get to the review, be on the lookout for this week's next episode on Friday by my partner in crime, Mr. Brown. He will review Digits by Young Thug. This is one is really out of my league. To have a Young Thug track on the top thousand, mm. the song is alright and the topic interesting. Again, about getting that money the young way, but really not my type of artist and style. Can't wait to hear Mr. Mel's review and reason to have this on our list. Wait up, I got an artist with a young in their name on my list for volume 2 for next season. Follow us and subscribe to find out which artist with a young in the name that me, the purest G-Money, listens to and loves. It's an interesting artist that I discovered last year. Now back to our video. Funky Dividends by the great group Three Times Dope on their original styling album. As far as originality, what makes this song's original? When this song came out, I was still in junior high. Rap was at an epic point in terms of diversity. You had the Juice Crew, De La Soul, LLQJ, Public Enemy, Boogie Down Production, MVD and the Boys, and then came Three Time Dopes with this amazing song. This one fitted me so well since I was into that era of stylish rap, artists with swag and smoothness. Funky Dividends came at the right time and was dope. The song was so original, rapping to this girl, having a conversation with her, an amazing concept it was. The video too was deaf, cool and original. One of my all time favorite videos. And for all these reasons, I had to go with a perfect score for originality. I give it a 5 out of 5. Courtesy of this card and all music for more information. A fun fact. Three Times Dope was a rap group hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, consisting of EST, Chuck Nice, and Woody Wood. 3XD, as they were called for short, were a part of the Hilltop Hustlers crew, which also included Steady B, Cool C, The Youngsters, Mentally Gifted, and others. At first, they recorded under the name 3D. Delivery, Lyrics, and Flow the lyrics were relevant and accurate for that time, simple yet original. The filler style was omnipresent. EST's pen was ill and he had such an amazing original flow. As a hip-hop quotable, I got four quotables for this dope track. 
on verse 1, the whole verse. Cruising down the Ave with my homeboy Boo, laying back like Jack Miller went to the groove. The greatest man in the life was cool, rocking my world. And I rock a little harder when I saw this fresh fly girl. Uh, hold up, I can't go out like a nut. I had to conjure out a cool way to strut. They called me ES, the overlord of fresh. I saw you in a dress and I just had to impress. My compliment came true in the club. She started to blush, then I knew what's up. Call her next morning, said what it'll be. Dinner and a movie are just chilling with me. She said me, so I went and got the slimy. But as soon as I opened the door, she said gimme. It was like I was a bone and she was fetching. She gobbled cold, swallowed my wands like greedy Gretchen. Then after a couple of weeks of good loving, my friend she did the dummy move and started asking for my dividends. Nah, 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 nah. Oh. As verse 2, I got, she wanted Jefferson's and Lincoln's. I said, no way, you're slim. What do you think? This is President's Day? People start bugging over things like that, honey. You know the time, so don't act funny with my money. I refuse to abuse my savings and loans, so if you want some ends, baby, you best go with your own. Now, I said it once before, and I say it again. Best believe you, you won't receive no dividends. As verse 3, I got... It's a shame nowadays you've got to stay paid. It ain't like the old days when you could serenade. Take walks with your girls at night in the park and in the shadow secretly still a heart. But the new wave 80s has everything reversible. Instead of walks, you drive a cattle like convertible. Two bounds to kill you and all you need is one to constantly bug you to get their hair done. Every week's a new style, she's always got to rock it like a Super Bowl sack she's stacked in your pocket. Oh, you see, it started back in the 80s. It was there in the 70s too. It always been there, the gold diggers. As the fourth verse, I got a whole verse, and it goes like, Now I don't like to get upset and I don't like to riff, but one thing that gets me hype is when the girls shoot the gift. Now there's a little saying about the G-O-B, but what she's really trying to do is take your D-O-E. Man, wreck your whole check on the latest design. When you're broke, it's all a joke, but when you pay, paid, it's fine. This is back to you, I learned, begin to let it sing, and you can spin, but don't be taking nothing, my friend. Now I said it once before, and I'ma say it again, best believe you won't receive no dividends. Courtesy of Genius.com for the lyrics, and for all these reasons, I had to go with for lyrics and delivery lyrics with a 4.5 out of 5. A fun fact. EST would eventually go on to become an award-winning songwriter for top-tier R&B acts such as Trey Songz, Mario, Beyoncé, and Destiny's Child. He has a Grammy nomination in 2005 for Destiny's Child's Cater to You song. Yeah, he really evolved, he, he changed his game, he went on to do production, the writing side. Now it's time for the top five drum rolls, please. Here's my top five three times dope tracks in any particular order. For one, I got The Greatest Man Alive from your album Original Styling in 88. Then I got the song Original Styling from the same album Original Styling in 88. Then we got Funky Dividends, what I'm reviewing, from Original Styling 2 in 88. Then you got Mr. Sandman, that's from the album Live from a Nicholas Land in 1990. And then you got the song, 10 Little Sucker MCs. That's a dope track, man. It's a posse cut. It's from the album Live from a Nicholas Land in 1992. That was my top five three-time dope tracks all time. Production and beat. What makes this good or bad? The beat was very smooth and groovy. A beat to listen to, which you mean squeeze your girl. Hip-hop was starting to have songs tending for the female audience like Kwame, uh, Kuji, Evidi and the Boys, Young MC and many others. Rap started to have a softer style and sound. The scratches and the hook was the best part of the beat with the John F. Kennedy sample of The World is Very Different Now. Notes about the producer? Chuck Nice, not to be confused with the Philly stand-up comic radio personality. He produced many songs for his group, Three Times Dope. Steady B, Larry Lar, and many other fully independent rappers group over the years. Then you got also as a producer, critics on the song, Lawrence Goodman, aka LG the Teacher. He's considered as the godfather of the Philadelphia hip hop scene. He was the man who birthed the Philadelphia hip hop scene by starting the careers of Will Smith, Salt and Pepper, Cool C, Steady B, The Youngsters, 
Three Times Dope, The Hilltop Hustlers Crew, and many more. In the late 80s, before Cold Chilling, Lawrence LG, the teacher, signed Rising, Queensbridge, New York star, Roxanne Chante, MC Shen, to his independent pop art record label, and the rest was history. He was the producer and manager mixer behind all the projects at his pop art label from 81 to 96, and produced many songs of three artists signed to major labels like Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Steady B, Cool C, Three Times Dope, and his most successful group, the youngsters that included two of his sons and nephew in the group. I got all this information from the coolschool.blogspot.com where you had a good reference on Philip Rap World. And also you got a documentary of Lawrence L.G. Goodman on YouTube available you can watch. The beat contains four samples deep. Multiple elements from Honey by Delegation in 1977, the drums from Synthetic Substitution by Melvin's Bliss in 1973. Then you got vocal lyrics from The Devil Made Me Buy This Dress by Flip Wilson in 1970. And vocal lyrics of the inaugural address speech by John F. Kennedy in 1961. Courtesy of Woosample.com for the samples and for this reason I had to go production and beat with a 4.25. A fun fact, Sammy Davis Jr., a longtime of Frank Sinatra, supporter of the Democratic Party and member of the Rat Pack, was asked by John F. Kennedy not to attend the gala at the BS of his father, Joseph Kennedy Sr., fearing that his interracial marriage to Swedish actress May Britt was too controversial for the time and occasion, much to Sammy's and Sinatra's dismay. Sammy Davis had already postponed his wedding to Brit until after the election of uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. Also, at the request of Kennedy campaign via Sinatra, Davis eventually switched his support after that to the Republican Party and Richard Nixon in the early 70s because of this incident. Harry Belafonte expressed sadness at the controversy, stating it was the ambassador. But we didn't know that until after. Sammy not being there as, at the president's inaugural speech was a loss to that historical moment. That's the politics and bullshit behind the scene. Before we get back to the next section, we had 40 years of hip hop. Use Buzzsprout to broadcast our podcast and get our show listed on every podcast platform available. So far, our podcast is listed on over 20 platforms and reached $10,000 in less than a year. As a Best Prop member, you will get a great looking podcasting platform, an audio player that you can drop into your website, even WordPress. You will also benefit with detailed analytics and tools to promote your episode like audio video snippets of your podcast called Soundbites. My favorite benefit is that I get to generate a second review by talking about something that I'm passionate about. Think about it. Are you a fan of something? Try podcasting about it. It's as easy as one to three and can generate your secondary revenue. Get started for free, no credit card required, cancel any time, no contract. Use the link in our episode notes to let Buzzsprout know that we referred you and if you sign up after your trial to a paid plan, you'll receive a $20 Amazon gift card and help support our show. Buzzsprout is the way to go. Relevance and longevity. Did it stand the test of time? If so, how? The song with time has not stayed in people's memory and mind too long, past the late 90s. I never heard anyone mention about three times dope. It's like they have forgotten how dope this group was and how they contributed to the original part of hip hop when hip hop was still diverse musically. Since the 2000s, we have had a multitude of clone artists supported by the greedy labels, you know. The song charted 22 on Billboard R&B hip hop singles and the album charted at 122 on Billboard 200. You know, that's pretty good during the 90s. The song had a remix named Going For Broke Remix produced by Joe the Butcher Niccolo. The Butcher was a hip-hop producer, studio engineer, and label owner from Philly. He became well-known within the hip-hop circles when he created Studio for Recording, where many classics Philly hip-hop recordings from the late 80s and early 90s took place. This led to him becoming staff producer at Columbia Records, where he produced for a more diverse range of artists, including Billy Joel and Rolling Stones. While at Columbia, he also created the Rough House record imprint, which brought many hip-hop acts to wide attention, notably Cypress Hill, Criss Cross, and the Fugees. And for all these reasons, I had to go with a 2.75 for relevance and longevity. Impact. 
I'll give the song impact of hip hop culture. The song's impact on hip hop wasn't too impressive. It is a class enjoyed with many hip hop veterans and friends, a part of hip hop history that's long lost sadly. I hope with the sudden resurgence by hip hop 90s veterans such as Nas and Easy coming out with new joints and the Dipsets vs. The Locks amazing battle will make people remember that classic songs from that era exist. At least we at 40 years of hip hop are here to remind you and educate you about these rare gems. As the third single of the album, it has been quoted and referenced in, in, in a few songs. The most notable artists that use some of the lyrics in the songs are Silk the Shocker, featuring Moby Dick on the song My Car, when Moby Dick on his verse said, Now it's none of their business how I make my hands, and you can get a piece of my funky dividends. You also got Style P that referenced this in the song I'm a Beast, when he says, you get in it or get it again. Dirty money stink, funky dividends. No EST, got ESP. That was nice. That was nice. And for all these reasons, for Impact, I had to go with uh, 3.25. So to sum it up, uh, I got for originality, a perfect score of 5. Lyrics and flow, a 4.5 out of 5. For production and beat, a 4.25. Relevance and longevity are 2.75 and impact 3.25 for a total of 19.75 out of 25 for a percentage of 79%. Thank you, fellow hip hop viewers, for tuning into our podcast at 40 years of hip hop.bossproud.com and clicking on the support us hard icon to buy us a coffee so that we can continue our weekly podcast journey until we reach a thousand episodes. We're also available on all of your major podcast platforms, YouTube and Dailymotion. Follow us on social media at 40 Years of Hip Hop, IG, Twitter, and Facebook. We also made Feedspot's Top 50 Hip Hop Podcast list at number 40. Go check the list. We all the links in our episode notes. I'll be back next week with Drum Will Please and Fred by my man Pusha T. This is the G-Man signing out, and I'm Audi 5000. Peace.